Greetings! In this video, I'm going to talk about indexes and a particular data structure that is ubiquitously used for indexes and for many other things in databases and other systems called a B plus tree. So let's start with how we kind of are going to think about accessing data in our database to begin with. So you may recall from the video on database storage that we're typically going to store our data in a heap file, just some file on disk. It has a bunch of pages, and within these pages, our tuples are not stored in any particular order. And the operations that we're going to want our heap file to support, and this is actually going to be a little more general than just our heap file, we're going to think about different access methods. Uh, ways that the database system accesses the data that's stored, uh, but heap file operations and kind of in general are access uh, op method operations. We'll want to be able to create or destroy a file. Uh, we'll, as we've seen, want to be able to insert a tuple. We'll want to be able to delete a particular tuple, and we're going to identify a particular tuple using something called a record ID, or RID. And this record ID uh, is going to be a kind of unique identifier for, for our tuple. Exactly what it is uh, is going to vary by system. Uh, I'll say a little more about things that it, it, it might be uh, in a little later. But given some a, a unique identification of a tuple, we want to be able to delete it. Um, we want to be able to retrieve a tuple given its uh, record ID. And finally, we want to be able to scan all the tuples in a file. Right? Scanning through tuples is going to be kind of fundamental to running any sorts of queries over our data. But wait, there is more that we might want to do. Uh, we might want to uh, scan all tuples that are going to match some predicate. And this is where we might say something like, find all students uh, with uh, GPA greater than 3.5. Uh, we're going to want to kind of scan all the, the tuples in our data, but retrieve just the ones that match some predicate. Uh, and it's critical that we be able to support requests like this efficiently. Uh, and in particular, this, uh, like all students whose GPA greater than 3.5, uh, that's going to retrieve some small fraction uh, of our data, and it is inefficient if we have to read all the data, every single student tuple in our database, in order to uh, uh, match, uh, re retrieve the matching one. So, uh, kind of, we're going to want to, uh, in today's uh, video, develop methods to kind of do this sort of thing uh, uh, more efficiently. So one sort of thing that might um, So just to make this concrete, let's set up with what actually would a heap file uh, look like, perhaps. And again, this will take a kind of student uh, relation as an example. Uh, there's a student ID that's an integer, an age that's an integer, and other attributes. And our heap file might look something like this. Where we have student IDs, 
and then the associated uh, attributes for that tuple. So we'll have ages, and then there'll be other things in there. And so I've drawn these boxes kind of uh, small to fit them on the board, but the idea here is that one of these kind of uh, rows is a tuple, and that each of these boxes is a page. And so pages, if they're, uh, they'll, they'll definitely have more than just, just two tuples, but uh, our heap file is going to be some number of pages, each of which contain a subset of the tuples of uh, some relation or, or other um, kind of entity in our database, and they're not in any particular order. And so uh, let's say that we have Ten thousand students in our in our database. Um, so our and we'll have ten uh, student tuples per page. That's how many that we're going to be able to, to fit into our into our pages on disk. Uh, and so that means that we'll have a thousand total pages. To, to hold our 10,000 student tuples. And if we want to find the student with uh, SID of 80, this is going to require reading 500 pages um, on average. And this is because we don't know where within our, our heap file a uh, student with uh, some, some particular ID is located. And so we'll just start, kind of, just start a sequential scan, just start reading through the tuples. Um, and on average, if we're looking for a particular one, we'll find it uh, within, the, within uh, by reading through about half the pages, sometimes uh, fewer, sometimes more, but about half on average. And if we want to do something like uh, find all students older than 20, then we're going to have to just read through all 1,000 pages uh, because we don't have any information about where students of a particular age are located within our heap file, so we'll just have to scan through anything. So the question is, can we do better? Now, one way that we might think about doing better is, well, what if we just sorted uh, our, our heap file? Instead of storing it in sort of arbitrary order, uh, let's sort it. And we would typically uh, uh, sort something like this uh, along, according to the primary key. Uh, so to update my unsorted heap file to a sorted one, now sorted by student ID, uh, and, but the ages still kind of whatever, um, where, wherever they, uh, kind of whatever age that, that student is. Uh, and so now, um, if we update our look at, all right, well, to find a student who has a particular student ID, uh, we have I've improved on this by now we're able to do binary search on our heap file. We know that it's in sorted order by student ID, so we can go to the uh, the middle one and then know, and then kind of rule out half of the the, the tuples and and then search the other half. Uh, so this is going to be uh, kind of log base two of our thousand pages is how long it would take to do a. Um, a binary search, and this is going to be just approximately 10 pages that we have to read uh, in order to, to find a student with an SID uh, matching a particular value. So this is a big improvement over our unsorted um, uh, unsorted heap file, but this is only for this like what you might call a point query. Uh, we just want a we're looking for a particular individual. Uh, uh, tuple matching some attribute, and it happens to be the one that we, we've sorted on, the, the student ID. But to find students older than 20, we've made no improvement uh, 
um, by moving to this, this sorted file uh, under student ID. Now, we could uh, sort the file, say, ac according to age, um, but this would only work uh, for now queries that are on age, that if we have it, we can only kind of have it sorted by, by one attribute in, in a way that's going to help these kind of queries. Um, we could <clears throat> we could maybe have a have kind of two versions of the file, one sorted by uh, student ID, one sorted by age, uh, and we potentially run into issues of we need to keep these in sync or using more space, um, and so there there are definitely some challenges there. Um, and finally, a uh, having the whole file sorted like this is um, going to be pretty inefficient for for inserts and deletes uh, because. Any modification is going to require us to, to maintain this sorted order. So do we move things around to keep it compact? Do we leave empty holes? Um, and so there's it, it's going to be messy and kind of inefficient if we're doing a lot of updates to our data. So what we're going to arrive at, instead of a, a sequential file, something in sorted order, we're going to use uh, a structure that's called an index. So What do I mean by index? Well, an index in a database system is going to be analogous to an index in a, a book or, or a textbook. That when you want to uh, find where in a book a particular term or name appears, uh, you can go to this kind of separate portion of the book called the index. Uh, it's uh, in alphabetical order, so it's easy to find uh, what you're looking for, and then it has a pointer. It directs you to where in the data, where in the book, you can find the reference uh, that you're looking for. Um, and the, the, the data itself is not sorted the same way that the index is, but the index is sorted in a way that makes it uh, easy to do these sort of uh, lookups. Um, by uh, kind of alphabetically by a particular term. And the indexes in databases will kind of serve a similar kind of purpose. Uh, and to kind of write up a definition for it, indexes are going to be some kind of data structure. And we'll, we'll talk about a few different ones uh, that, that, that are commonly used. Um, and so they're going to be a data structure that organizes our um, tuples um, on disk in order to optimize um, searches on particular attributes. So when we talk about having an index in a database system, it's going to be indexed on some subset, an, a, a, one or more attributes of a particular relation. We will construct an index on that, and it is going to uh, have information about uh, the, the values of, the, uh, of those attributes and the associated tuples organized on disk to kind of optimize uh, queries on those attributes. And so what I mean by optimized searches is that our index is going to support efficient retrieval uh, of data entries, tuples, um, with with a given search key value k. Uh, and so this is a kind of key aspect of what we're doing with, with indexes. As I was saying, they're, they're on particular attributes. So our index will be built around some uh, search key, and for 
uh, queries that are looking for uh, data entries, tuples, uh, with a, a particular value of this search key or, or some predicate involving this search key, that is when we can use the index uh, to, to support more efficient retrieval uh, of those. And so our search key uh, can be any set any set of attributes uh, of, of our data. Uh, so it might be, um, uh, we, we might have an index on student age, um, and uh, we might have a, have a separate index on student GPA, uh, so that queries in, involving uh, both of them can be supported, uh, one or the other can be supported efficiently. Uh, we could have uh, uh, an index on, on multiple attributes like student age and uh, geo geographic location uh, so that if you, um, uh, uh, so that the, the data entries were, were organized by kind of both of those attributes and a query involving both uh, could use that index uh, efficiently. So, so what are these data entries? Um, and these data entries might be uh, the key and some record ID, uh, some tuple that, that, that matches, that goes with uh, the, the, this particular uh, value of, of whatever search key our, our index is, is built on. Uh, we might have the search key and some list of record IDs. So if the search key is a particular student's age, uh, then there may be many tuples in the data. There almost certainly will be uh, that, that kind of match that search key of students that have that age. And so uh, our index might store a, a list of them of the corresponding records. Um, uh, and in some cases, might just store the actual tuple itself that instead of some, uh, some uh, reference to the tuple, uh, that corresponds to that, just the actual tuples are stored uh, in the index. And kind of different database systems will, will do different things. Um, to say a little bit more about what, uh, what are record IDs uh, typically are, um, actually, I think that that will be, uh, can be, be clarified if I put up a, a visual drawing of what an index might look like. So if we have our index file over here, where the search key is the age of the student, uh, and we have our, our heap file uh, here. So let's say that our heap file is uh, uh, clustered or, or, or sorted, it's sequential on um, our primary key, our student ID. And I'll we'll put some more records in here. Then what our index file might look like uh, is it will have pages that consist of uh, uh, a search key value and we have entry entries for various uh, various student ages and then to go along with those will be say our uh, uh, record ID uh, which is going to refer us to a particular tuple in the heap file. And so we say, oh, there's a, a, a tuple with age 18 here, um, and here, and with 22 is here, 19 here, there's some other record down there that has 19, uh, 20, 21, and, and so on. Uh, and so uh, you might be able to see that, all right, now we have an index file that's sorted by some search key, in this case, age. And uh, we can use that. We, we can much more easily 
given that this is sorted by age, find where the, the tuples that correspond to a specific age. So if we wanted uh, all students older than 20, we just need to find where 21 starts and then just read sequentially from there. And each uh, entry in our index tells us where to find a matching tuple. Now, what are these arrows, the, the, these record IDs? Uh, they're, uh, uh, as I said, the details will vary by system, but a common, uh, a common way to do it would be it's a combination of page ID and of offset. So uh, this arrow would identify that it is this page, some page ID, and that it is offset is zero, that it's the first tuple in that page ID. Whereas this arrow says some other page ID, offset of one, uh, it's the second tuple in that page. And so this would be a way to kind of have the equivalent of a pointer to a, to a tuple, where to find that on disk, which page to, to read, and, and how far into it to read. So um, some index, uh, indexes may fit entirely in memory, uh, or they may be stored as pages in a file um, uh, just on the disk, just like heap files. Um, so uh, last, last week, uh, we had a, had a video about hashing uh, and, and different um, kind of ways to, to approach hash tables. And uh, hash tables make kind of good uh, in-memory indexes uh, where uh, we, we want to uh, be able to, to, to quickly look up, kind of say, a, a point query. We, have, uh, uh, we want to look up a particular um, uh, tuple with a particular student ID. So if we had... Um, before I was uh, was talking about, we have a say a, a sequential file sorted on on student ID, and we do some sort of binary search to find where where a, a particular tuple is. But if we had a hash table sitting in in, in memory, because uh, e even that binary search, uh, we're still kind of jumping uh, around to different pages within our file. Uh, disk is is better for sequential reads rather than. On, Kind of a bunch of random access, so this binary search might might not be ideal. Uh, but if we, if we had a hash table sitting in, in memory, that uh, you, we had a hash function that, that took a student ID um, and uh, hashed into some kind of an uh, index like this, where kind of in memory we could compute a hash and then get the specific RID that corresponds to the tuple on disk we're looking for. So uh, a hash table would be a kind of efficient index in, in, in that way, and as, as we'll see when we start talking about um, uh, implementing uh, query operations like, uh, like joins, uh, temporary hash tables are, are often used as part of join operations. Um, a real downside to hash tables is that they don't support range queries at all. Um, that a hash table can't help us with something like find all the students who are older than 20. Um, there's, that's not something where we can just hash to a particular slot in our hash table and, and get the answer. So we're going to want some sort of uh, a data structure for our index that can support um, range queries and, and other things that we might want to do. So with this sort of basic idea of an index um, uh, out of the way, I, I want to talk about some, some terminology and, and different ways that we might structure uh, uh, indexes and, and Show, show, show some examples to, to illustrate that. So one key piece of terminology is that we can have a clustered index and a non-clustered index. And a clustered index is that the the order of the search keys in our index matches the order of the tuples in our data file. Um, and so that is that our, our data file is going to contain the tuples in sorted order, and it's going to match 
uh, the, the order of the search keys in our in our index. And so this is, uh, in the sense that the tuples in the data file are clustered, are sorted uh, a, a according to the index. Uh, clustered index also uh, can be called a primary index, uh, although it's not necessary that, that the search key be the primary key. You can have clustered indexes of, of uh, on other attributes, though uh, it is it is not uncommon to have a clustered index uh, on the primary key. And there is also we can have a dense uh, clustered index, which says uh, we have an entry. Or we have an entry for every different value that the search key has. Um, and this is uh, uh, in comparison to uh, a sparse clustered index, uh, which have entries for only some search key values. So I think this is best illustrated uh, with uh, some visual examples. So uh, what I've pulled up on the screen is an example of a clustered, uh, clustered index, a dense clustered index. Uh, so this is the uh, instructor uh, table from, from the example university database. And its uh, attributes are, are an instructor ID, an instructor name, uh, a department and a salary. And what we have on the left is a, a dense clustered index on instructor, uh, instructor ID. So the index has uh, its search key of ID, it's in sorted order. Uh, and this is a clustered index because the order of uh, the index matches the order of the tuples uh, uh, in the data file. And so each um, each entry in our index has our search key and then a, a reference to the corresponding tuple. So this is in contrast to a, uh, a sparse clustered index where uh, same, same uh, uh, instructor data, uh, except now our index doesn't have an entry for every different search key value that kind of our, our dense index every single value, a different value of instructor ID in the data had a corresponding entry in our index. Um, in sparse, we don't have that. Instead, we just have uh, some of the, of the search key values and then, it's, and then we know that between uh, the, the, the reference to uh, 10101 and the next one are kind of, that is where we would find any um, tuples that have a value between these two. So this is going to make our index uh, a lot smaller, right? We don't have nearly as many uh, uh, entries in our index. Uh, it does mean that to, we might have to do a little bit of kind of sequential scanning to find uh, a particular tuple, uh, but we've kind of um, bounded the amount of scanning we have to do uh, by the number of entries we have in our index. Uh, so that's kind of a, a trade-off there. Um, and I also want to make the point that, that we have both of these examples are using the, the, the primary key of this relation, the, the instructor ID as uh, the index search key, but that doesn't have to be the case. Uh, we could use something like uh, the department as the search key for a clustered index. And the clustered index says order of the search keys is the same as the order of the tuples in the file. So when we have a clustered index on, say, department name, then that means that our tuples uh, in the data file must be sorted according to the department name. Um, and so here we have a, a dense index. We have an entry in our index for every different department name in the data. Uh, and um, we have each of these references kind of where the corresponding tuples start. Um, so uh, you, could, you could imagine that instead of a single reference, this could be a list of, uh, of references to each tuple that has a matching value or a reference to just the first one and then you, you might need to scan down um, to, 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 find, to find all of them. Um, 
So this is our, our uh, cluster index on, on department name, and, and uh, perhaps, it, perhaps it's obvious, but we can only, if we have just one copy of the data, uh, we can only have one clustered index, that our, our data can't be, can't be sorted uh, by both department name uh, and uh, instructor ID. So we, we kind of have one clustered index, uh, which says, well, uh, what about other indexes? That's where we have our non-clustered index, or also called secondary index. And as you might expect, this just says the order of the search keys does not equal the order of the tuples in the data file. So search key order in our index does not equal, so I can, does not equal the order in our data file. Uh, and we saw an example of this actually when I was, when I drew out the, the student age uh, uh, information, the, the order of the, the ages and the index did not match the order of uh, the, the tuples. We had arrows kind of going every which way. Um, and we could see, uh, and we can see an example of this with our instructor data that uh, in, instead of having our uh, clustered index by department name, um, we have a, uh, a, a non-clustered index by a department name where now each entry of the index uh, kind of refers to a, a kind of um, perhaps an, an array of, of record IDs, uh, or RIDs, which are going to kind of uh, uh, direct us to the, the particular tuples that, that match that, that department name. Um, so we can see that, that indexes like this are going to make queries such as like find the student whose student ID is 80 um, very efficient. We kind of just need to read one page from disk because our index tells us exactly which page uh, to look at. Um, and if we think about queries like uh, find all students older, uh, older than 20, uh, a clustered index uh, is, is going, to be, going to be helpful because then the entry in our index for age, say, 21, is going to tell us where on disk do we start reading to, to read through all the students um, older than 20. But uh, we still have questions of how would we navigate the index to find maybe the, the, the 21, the starting point um, uh, of our search. Uh, how would we handle updates? Um, and what if it isn't clustered? Uh, can, we st can it still help? Um, help these sort of range queries. And uh, also if we, we, we don't want to think exclusively in terms of, of sorted, uh, sorted files because as, uh, as we get more and more data, uh, the performance of this file is going to get worse, um, both in terms of, of uh, index lookups and, and sequential scans to the data. So we, we need some sort of robust uh, and flexible data structure that's going to be able to give us an uh, 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 say a, a non-clustered index that, that can support all those sorts of different queries that we want uh, and that's where the B plus tree is going to come in. So B plus tree is going to build on ideas of uh, uh, search trees that, that you will have seen in a, in a data structures class. And uh, it's, it's a, as I said it at the top, it's a very common uh, uh, index data structure in database systems. Virtually every database system uh, is going to use B plus trees. Um, and The B plus tree um, is kind of a, a variation of something called a B tree. That's kind of the original uh, data structure that it's based on. Uh, an interesting fact that the inventors um, of the of the, the the two inventors of the B plus tree, um, Bayer and McCrate, uh, have never said what the B stands for. Um, perhaps it's Boeing, where they were working when they invented this. Uh, maybe it's balanced because it's it's a balanced tree, or broad, or or bushy. Maybe it's bare. One of the one of the two inventors, um, the, the inventor Edward McCrate, has said, uh, "quote The more you think about what the B in B trees means, the better you understand B trees." 
Um, so food, food for thought, I, I suppose. Uh, but what is a B plus tree? It's going to have kind of a set of, of properties that we're going to maintain as we, as we insert and delete things um, in, in the tree, like you may have seen in, in other, um, uh, other balanced trees or, uh, or, or things, uh, things like a heap. Uh, you have some, some invariants, some uh, properties that you're going to kind of enforce as you modify the tree. So our B plus tree is perfectly balanced, meaning that all leaves of the tree are the same height. And we're just going to maintain this, this perfectly balanced tree, uh, which is going to give us kind of nice uh, logarithmic uh, height. And uh, this is a kind of uh, generalization of a binary uh, a search tree, where a binary search tree says, all right, every node uh, has at most two children. Uh, this is an m airy tree, uh, where this capital M is, is some fixed constant uh, that could be different between, between different B plus trees. Uh, but for a pretty good B plus tree, we'll say like uh, nodes have at most uh, four, four children or, or 10 or, or whatever, whatever we choose for M. Um, but uh, this means that um, uh, our nodes have up to m children in our tree. Um, and then we're going to have some, uh, uh, some kind of capacity, uh, minimum capacity requirements. We don't want a bunch of, of kind of empty nodes uh, cluttering up our tree that are going to, to make it uh, longer to, to find stuff in it. So we're going to say um, inner nodes, meaning nodes that are not leaves at the bottom of the tree. Uh, inner nodes uh, other than the root, because the, the root's going to be special, um, must be at least half capacity. And what this half capacity is going to mean uh, is that they have um, C children where it's the case that um, C is between M divided by 2 rounded up and yeah. So uh, a, uh, a, a an inner node has to have uh, kind of uh, if it can have up to four uh, four children, uh, it has to have at least two um, to be to be valid. Uh, if m is is seven, then inner nodes have to have at least four children, half rounded up. Um, and notice that this is. Uh, particularly about the number of children that the node has, and, and we'll see what this means um, uh, in, a, uh, in a moment. Um, and a, a consequence of, uh, of this, um, of, a, of a node having C children, is that every inner node with C children is going to have C minus one keys. Uh, that, that each node is going to have some keys and then uh, uh, pointers to, to children that are going to kind of direct, uh, direct the search. And uh, then lastly, Our leaf nodes must be at least half full as well. And this means something uh, slightly different than what it means for, for inner nodes, um, which is our leaf nodes have to hold uh, k keys where k 
a has to be between m minus 1 over 2 rounded up and m minus 1. And uh, this is what I was talking about where uh, the, the number of uh, our, our leaf nodes are not going to have any children. Um, they're, they're at the bottom of the tree. They're, they're leaves. So this half full wouldn't apply to children. It applies to the actual search keys that are stored uh, stored at that, um, at that leaf. And we're going to maintain these properties as we insert and delete. That if a node would go over its capacity um, for, for children or keys, we're going to, to, to uh, kind of grow the tree and, and split nodes apart. If they fall below uh, where their kind of minimum, uh, minimum capacity of, of keys or children, then we're going to start merging nodes, merging nodes together. But uh, I think this is a, a little abstract, so let's look at a concrete example, and I think that will make, uh, make it much clearer uh, what these different uh, properties mean. So uh, this is another figure from uh, the, the, the textbook, which um, uh, again uses our instructor data, and we have a, a B plus tree on instructor name. And so uh, we have the, the root, internal nodes, and the leaf nodes. So I want to start at the bottom uh, of this tree with the leaf nodes and see that, that uh, each leaf node, um, th this is a M equals 4, by the way. Um, uh, so each node can have at most four children. And uh, uh, at the leaf node, we have specific uh, uh, values of our search key, specific instructor names. Uh, and along with each instructor name, we have a pointer, such as a, uh, an RID, that uh, refers to the tuple that, that corresponds to that instructor name. Uh, and also note that within each leaf node, uh, the, the search key values are in sorted order. Uh, and also that the, all the uh, search key values are kind of laid out in sorted order as we look along the base of, of our tree here. And uh, another interesting feature is that our leaf nodes have sibling pointers. Uh, in this diagram, it's just kind of next, uh, the next pointer, but uh, you might also have previous uh, pointers to the previous kind of the predecessor leaf node is as well. Um, and so the, the, the leaf nodes are going to contain search key values um, and uh, they're going to, along with each of those values, some, uh, some pointer uh, to, to the corresponding tuple or, or possibly the entire tuple, um, as I was, was mentioning earlier. Uh, so let's look at the internal and the root nodes. So an interesting feature of a B plus tree is that uh, the actual information is stored entirely at the leaves. So uh, all, the, um, all, all the, the different instructor names that, that are in this index, they're all stored at the leaves. And the only role that our internal nodes play is directing the search to a particular leaf. And the way this works is that for a given key in an internal node, it will have a pointer to uh, values that are less than that key and a pointer to values that are equal to or greater than that key. So we see Mozart is at the root and we can, and if we're say looking for gold, uh, then we say, oh, gold is less than Mozart. So we would go left um, and start looking through our inter uh, in internal node here. Uh, all right, gold is, is uh, greater than Einstein, uh, gold is greater than or equal to gold, so then we would follow this second pointer and then find uh, the, the, the matching um, search key value uh, at, at the leaf and then follow that pointer to get to the, the corresponding tuple. Um, and uh, it, you, we can see this, this property in action where each of our interior nodes uh, each has kind of spots for four different uh, uh, kind of pointers, pointers to children. So, uh, so 
because this is an m equals four tree, each of our each of our nodes can have kind of uh, internal nodes can have four uh, four children coming off of them, um, and that means that they would have uh, if they had four children, they would have three uh, uh, keys stored in that node uh, to say like as, to say is this pointer kind of less than this key or or greater than or equal to, um, and when we're thinking about nodes. Uh, and the capacity requirements, remember that I said an internal node has to have uh, at least m divided by 2 rounded up children. And that's different than the number of, of search keys. So, so we see that this internal node only has one out of three possible keys. Um, so I might say, doesn't that make it below capacity? But the, what we care about for internal nodes is that it has two out of four children. Uh, and so this satisfies our constraint on internal nodes. Um, and for leaf nodes, there we cared about how many uh, keys were stored at the leaf node. And that was m minus 1 divided by 2 uh, was our minimum. So if our m is 4, minus 1 is 3, divided by 2 um, is 1.5, and we round that up to 2. So we have a minimum of two keys at each leaf node, and so all these leaf nodes are obeying that constraint because they each have at least two, uh, two search keys there. So this is a kind of big picture of, of the B plus tree. So let's, um, let's uh, I'm going to get to the actual operations, how, how do we insert and delete, uh, but first I want to zoom in for a bit on, uh, on the actual node uh, like what what is the B plus tree node going to going to look like? So uh, let's clear out some space. So we have some 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 tree. So say these are these are all uh, all nodes in our in our B plus tree. I want to kind of take a look at all right. What is in our leaf node? What is actually going to be inside? Well, each of these nodes is going to be made up of an array of key value pairs. Uh, so in our in our leaf node, uh, this is going to take the form of uh, a search key uh, and then a, a value of some kind which uh, as uh, in the examples we've looked at is always some reference to, to a particular tuple, so like, a, like a, an RID. Um, and we have uh, I have um, K, K1 through, through KN, all, all our search keys and the associated values. Um, and as I, I mentioned, our, our Leaf nodes will have sibling pointers, so we'll also have a previous and a next to kind of refer to uh, the, the leaf nodes on either side. In this particular picture, right next uh, would would uh, be be a, a null pointer because there is no next uh, kind of next sibling, and uh, there uh, will almost certainly be some some metadata. Uh, in in our leaf node as well, things like the the current size, the max size, perhaps a page ID, uh, and I and I bring up page ID specifically because each uh, uh, when we're talking about a B plus tree in a database system, each of our nodes. Will be a page of of data on on disk or in memory. And each each of these these nodes will be an entire page, and so uh, in the examples I'm going to go over, the nodes will always have just a few uh, keys in them, so that I can can actually uh, d sh show you what's going on. But in reality, each of our nodes are going to be an entire page, so they'll have a a, a, a significant number of, of these key value pairs. Um, in our internal nodes, uh, this array, uh, the, these values, in, instead of RIDs, referring to particular tuples, as we've seen, they would be uh, 
say like a page I, the page IDs uh, or some other pointer to uh, to the children of that uh, uh, of, of that node and and that gets to the fact that when each of these nodes are their own page, we can uh, uh, kind of refer to to a child or or a parent or a sibling via a page ID. That kind of each of these nodes will be identified by a particular page ID, um, and this sort of uh, structure where all the nodes are, are pages kind of builds upon the, the, the buffer pool manager that, that you are currently implementing uh, in the kind of all the, the operations on, on the nodes, there each, each node has a page ID and the system would use the buffer pool manager to ask for the, 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 the page corresponding to a particular node as it, as it operates on different ones. Um, let's see, yes, so these, uh, these internal, these arrays in, in the nodes, as I said, will be kept uh, typically in, in, in sorted order. Um, uh, and this means that, for example, if, if we're, if we're um, scanning along, along the leaf node. So, uh, so uh, uh, let's say we have, we have a, a, a B plus tree index on student age. And so on, on, in our leaf nodes on the bottom, we have kind of different ages as the search key with uh, references to, to particular tuples, and we want to do our query of um, all students older than 20. Well, we follow our B plus tree down to get to the, the leaf node that, that uh, contains the, uh, the, the, the value 21. And then because our leaf nodes have these, have these next pointers, we can just then scan sequentially along the leaf nodes uh, until, let's say we wanted older than 20, uh, but younger than 30. So then we would scan sequentially along the leaf nodes, starting with 21, until we hit a value uh, that was 30, because, because they're in sorted order, we know once we hit 30, we have found all the, all the things within our range. So um, we'd scan along the leaf nodes, kind of scanning through the arrays, following the next pointer, and then scanning there, uh, and allow us to kind of, with one tree traversal, then uh, do a sequential read of exactly the data we want and, and nothing more. So that's, that's uh, going to be a really nice feature of our, of our B plus tree. All right, so uh, let's actually talk about how we're going to insert and remove uh, from, our, from our B plus trees. So make some space on the board. And so our, uh, the, there's a, a textbook, uh, an excerpt from the textbook that, that's posted along um, uh, with, this, with this video. And for the, the procedures for insert and delete that I'm about to go over, uh, the, I'm not going over the like full detailed handle all the edge cases uh, procedures. Uh, for those, um, there are kind of figures in the, in the textbook excerpt that kind of lay out these full procedures. And, um, you're, you're going to want to, to refer to those to, uh, to make sure you understand exactly what's going on and, and uh, to, to understand why particular uh, examples work the way they do. Uh, but the sort of brief version of our insert is we have some key that we're, we're trying to insert uh, into, our, into some existing B plus tree. Uh, and so uh, our step... Number one is to find some leaf L where our key belongs. And we can do this, as I described, as traversing down our tree because we know uh, kind of we have these and the internal nodes, uh, keys and pointers where we can compare to the keys follow the pointer for less than or the greater than or equal to. Um, and uh, if the, the, the leaf that we found has room for our key, we insert it and we're done. Or that, that's all we need to do. Um, but our nodes have a kind of maximum number of keys that they can hold, uh, M, M minus one. Uh, and so if our leaf node is full, where we want to insert, 
uh, now we need to actually grow our tree to make room uh, for the new key we're inserting. Uh, and so in that case, we are going to create a new node, L prime, and uh, we're then going to engage in some redistribution, uh, uh, in this case of, of data entries. Um, uh, and, and this is going to include our new key. So we're going to redistribute the entries that, that were in L plus our new key um, uh, between L and, and, and L prime. Um, and then we're going to need to insert the middle key, the, the kind of uh, the median key of, of the entries in, in L, and including our um, uh, of the entries that are now in L and, and L prime. So we're going to insert our middle key into L's parent. So we need to, to take the middle key, insert it in L's parent, so that now we can have um, a, 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 a pointer to L prime, so that we can kind of add it into our tree. Now, the unfortunate thing, or the kind of cool thing, depending on, depending on how you look at it, is that when we insert uh, the middle key into uh, L's parent, well, L's parent might be full. And if we need to insert a new key into this full internal node, we're going to repeat step two with that parent node. And uh, an, important, uh, an important difference when we are uh, inserting, a, when we're doing step two with an internal node rather than with a leaf, uh, is that is that the middle key that we were inserting into L's parent by copying it and inserting L's parent, when we're splitting an internal node, we're not going to copy that key into the parent, we're going to move the key into the parent. And, and so, uh, why don't I just go through an example uh, so that you can uh, see exactly what I mean. So, for this, I'm going to say M is 4, and we're going to insert a very uh, exciting sequence of keys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So we start out with an empty root. Uh, and the root is special. It's OK if the root is below capacity, because otherwise we could never have an empty B plus tree. Uh, so we insert one. Well, where it belongs is just the root, and insert one, and it has some, some pointer to, to the corresponding data. We insert two, all is well, we insert three, and when it comes to inserting four, well, our, our, our nodes can only have at most three, uh, three, they can have four children, but at most three keys inside. So when it comes to four, now our leaf is full, and we have to, we have to split. So we're going to uh, create a new, a new node. Here's our, here's our L prime. And we want to redistribute our, our values from L plus our new key between the two nodes. 
So I'm going to, to say, all right, I'm going to take 3 and 4 and put them in our, in our new node. Uh, so we've done this redistribution, redistribution, and now we need to insert the middle key, which our middle key is going to be, is going to be 3, and we have an, an even number. Um, uh, the middle key will, will, well, the middle key will always be the first one that we have in, in the new node, and when we actually do this redistribution, if it's an odd number, we'll put one more in the new node than in the, than in the original. But we need to take this middle key and insert it into the parent, um, which means I'm going to redraw my tree so that we have one and two, and then we copy up the middle key to a parent, which will now have uh, two, uh, two children are our two nodes, and kind of all of the data that we've inserted is uh, in our leaf nodes. Remember, the internal ones, they're just signposts. They're just a guide. Uh, they're not where the, the actual information is, is stored. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, insert five. Well, five is greater than three, so I know it goes over here. So we, we've done these, now we're on six. All right, six is greater than three. I want to insert it here, but uh, my node is full, so I need to go through my splitting process again. I need to create a new, uh, a new node and redistribute my entries, and I'll adjust the, the placement here so we can fit them all. I had three, four, five, and now six. And then I copy up the middle key to the parent. Middle key is five. And I add a pointer to my new node L prime. Parent's not full yet, so we can keep going. We can insert seven. Seven greater than three, greater than five. Goes over here. That's, uh, we had room for it, so that's good. Now we need to insert eight. Oh, this is full, so we need to split it once more. And we have now five and six, seven and eight. We copy up the middle key. So we add seven and we add pointer to our new node. And m equals four means nodes have at most four children. So our root is now full, which uh, is fine for now. We insert nine. It fits in our, in our leaf. Uh, but when we go to insert 10, uh, all, all manner of hell is going to break loose because uh, our node here is full. So I'm going to redraw the whole tree for, uh, so that we have a new node. So we had 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, and then ten is our, our final insertion that we just did. And now we need to, to copy up and insert nine in the parent, except now the parent is full, so we have to split that. And so when we split that, we do the same process of uh, create two nodes, we draw them here, and we redistribute the, the entries, so we had three, five, seven, which means we have three and five, seven and nine, and we have all the, the, the pointers here. Um, like that, and um, what we'll do is uh, we we need to to 
the middle key, we need to move the middle key up to the parent. Uh, and so we actually don't copy it up, we move it up. And so we'll now have a root that has seven and our interior node here will just have nine. And this will be the, the interior node that refers here. This internal node will refer to these two. And we'll see like this. And so this was our kind of recursive splitting, where uh, splitting the leaf, then the parent was already full, so it had to split. Um, and there were a lot of steps involved. We kind of redistributed a kind of where, kind of which nodes get which pointers, which value gets pushed up. So I kind of went through it quickly, and this is why I say it's going to be really valuable to look through some examples and carefully trace through the full procedures uh, in the textbook, kind of make you to make sure you understand kind of why uh, each step that I just did is happening. Uh, I found it took kind of several examples carefully tracing through these procedures to feel like I really understood it. All right, so we've finished our inserts, um, and we have our, our glorious B plus tree, and now it comes time to uh, uh, wreak destruction upon it. So uh, let's transition to talking about, well, how are we going to delete values from our, from our B plus tree? All right, so we're actually going to start in the same way. We're going to find the leaf L where the key we're, we're, we're deleting. and removing it. And now comes the part where, well, if uh, the leaf node still has enough keys in it to be uh, at the required capacity, then we're fine, we're done, we don't have to do anything. Uh, but we have to consider the situation where uh, if L is now below half full, which means that uh, for, for leaves means that the number of keys is less than m minus 1 over 2 rounded up. Um, for internal nodes, we're going to count the number of children and require it to be at least m over 2. Uh, but if, if it's below half full, uh, we're first going to try to steal values from a sibling um, to see if it, it, it does, does a sibling have enough uh, keys that we could take one to keep L uh, half full without causing the other one to follow, uh, a sibling to, to fall below half full? So we'll try that first, um, borrowing from, from a sibling, some adjacent node with the same parent as L. But uh, if we... Uh, if we can't redistribute, meaning that taking some key from a sibling would cause that key to be uh, below half full rather than ourselves, not solving any problem. So if we can't, we're going to merge L with a sibling. We're going to merge two nodes together such that the, the resulting merge node will obey our invariant, will be at least half full. And If our merge occurred, then um, we need to we need to delete the entry uh, from L's parent. Um, that points to the merged nodes, because once we merge two nodes, our parent's going to have an extra key in it uh, that, that we no longer need. All right, so uh, let's do our, um, uh, our, our destruction on this B plus, uh, B plus tree that, that I painstakingly built up by uh, 
you know, I, I, I prefer odd to even, so let's just uh, uh, get rid of all, the, all, these, all these even keys. Um, no, no more use for them. Uh, be gone. Be gone, even keys. All right, so we're going to start out deleting no, uh, 2. We say, all right, 2 is less than 7, follow left. 2 is less than 3, follow here. We start look, we just kind of loop, uh, look, look through the, the entries in our leaf node. Oh, we found a matching one to, let's remove it. All right, is this node now below, uh, below half full? So with, with m equals 4, we say m minus 1 is 3, divided by 2 is 1.5, uh, rounded up is 2. So half full means at least 2. Uh, so this node is now uh, below capacity. Can we redistribute? Uh, well, if we took uh, if we took a value from here over, uh, then um, this one would be below half capacity, so we can't redistribute. So now that means we have to merge these two. So merge uh, just means uh, all right. Let's instead have one one node here that has one, three, four, uh, and now we say all right. Uh, if we if a merge occurred, we're going to delete from L's parent the uh, the the one that, that pointed to to the merge node because three we don't need it anymore. And we're left with just five here that refers to these two. And so this deletion of an entry from a parent could the same way inserting does could cause a, a cascade of okay. Well, now this is below capacity and we have to, to merge again or, or whatever. Uh, in this case, m being 4 means we have to, internal nodes have to have at least two children, have to have uh, at least half of, of their maximum children. We still have two children in this node, so uh, that's fine. All right, so we're done with that delete. How about deleting 4? Four? 4 is less than 7, less than 5, scan through, find 4, get rid of it there. Uh, this node is still at uh, and have capacity, so we're, we're fine, nothing more to do. That one was easy. All right, let's do six. Uh, six is less than seven, but greater than five. Scan through, okay, we found six. All right, this node is now in, in violation of uh, the, the general B plus tree uh, uh, mandate, and we can't borrow from a sibling because that would cause it to fall below half capacity. Um, so we're gonna need to merge. Um, so we're going to merge these two. And we're left with one, three, five in the merged, in the merged node. Um, and then we're going to delete from here the entry that referred to the node that was, was merged away. And so we still have kind of one pointer uh, in uh, one child of this node, but there, but one is below our, our minimum of two. So this uh, this node is now um, uh, now um, below capacity, and we have to, to deal with that. Uh, so uh, for this, we're going to um, basically uh, take the, uh, the 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 kind of middle. Uh, the, the key that was dividing these two nodes, um, and, uh, uh, and and kind of bring that up and merge it together uh, with with its with its sibling, um, and so we'll, uh, and, and that will in turn get rid of get rid of the, the the value that was was dividing these two when we merge them, uh, and so the the result here. will be 5 and 9 with, um, oh, I think not 5 in this case, it will, will be 7 with here, here, and 9 still referring to here. Um, yes, yeah, so sorry, not, not bringing uh, that, that middle key up, but rather uh, when this, when this was, was kind of merged together, um, we would bring down the value in, in the parent, uh, and end up with a situation like this, um, uh, and so this is this is 
why uh, the, the deletion procedure in, in the textbook is, is quite extensive because there are a lot of these kind of particular um, uh, sequences of, of events that, that we have to kind of work through, work through carefully. Um, now it comes to, comes to removing eight. Eight's greater than seven, less than nine, so we can find it here. Uh, this is below capacity. We can't borrow from the neighbor, so we need to merge them. And we get seven, nine, and ten. And uh, then we uh, will get rid of uh, the entry that was referring to the node that was merged away. And uh, we're now in, in this situation. And finally, we can uh, remove the last even number, uh, achieve, achieve true oddness, um, uh, find where 10 is, remove it. This is still a capacity. And so now we have kind of trimmed down our RB plus tree uh, through these series of deletes. So uh, this is a kind of complicated industrial strength data structure um, uh, linked from the bottom of uh, the, the, the notes for, for the video are uh, a PDF that kind of walks through an extended example. Um, I found that very helpful uh, in, in kind of going through that example, while also looking at the procedures in the textbook and kind of verifying, okay, th these things that are happening in the example, which kind of seem logical, they're, they like create a, a structure that still follows all the rules of the B plus tree. But for some of them, it, it, was, it was a question of, well, well, what is the actual like procedure set of rules that you can follow such to kind of resolve this particular situation uh, that is, there's, there's going to be a part of the procedure in the textbook that does that. I think that would be very helpful. There's some alternative notes linked uh, from the notes um, from a database class uh, at UC Berkeley. Uh, and finally, there's um, uh, Someone going by the name Graham has created an interactive B plus tree uh, demo uh, on their, their personal uh, website, uh, which is kind of the, the, the best kind of interactive visualization that I found. So I, I definitely recommend taking a look at that. All right, so with our B plus trees, we're going to be able to build indexes that um, even for uh, secondary Uncluster, uh, non-clustered indexes. Uh, we're going to be able to kind of efficiently find, um, uh, because we have these balanced trees, efficiently find uh, particular search key values, and then even do kind of sequential scans along our leaf nodes to, to to get a kind of range to find all the tuples within a particular range. All right. So with that, oh. With, with, with that, uh, I look forward to your questions. Uh, seeing you in office hours and lab. Uh, bye. Oh, oh, it's dark in here. Which, which way is is this the way out? No, oh, oh, no, no, that's that's not it. Um, uh, wish me luck. Bye.